Greetings, people of Earth. Welcome back. My name is Jax, and today we are talking about learned helplessness. Now, if you haven't taken a psychology course, you might not know what this term means. Um, this term has kind of been adopted by like the red pill um, community a little bit uh, in kind of a negative way. I'll kind of do my best to describe it psychologically, and then we will talk about it in a broader sense. I don't really follow the whole red pill community's view on learned helplessness, but I do have some thoughts. So if you don't know, learned helplessness, it was developed, this, this concept was developed by two psychologists. They worked on dogs, I think. I can remember from my psychology courses, it's been a while. Basically, they had three groups of dogs, and these dogs were subjected to different levels of adversity in terms of being put in a cage, and some of them had a cage that would electrically shock them, and others didn't. And basically what they realized is that in the face of sort of unsurmountable difficulties, the dog, a specific group of dogs would just give up. You know, they wouldn't try to fight it. They wouldn't try to get out. They wouldn't try to, um, they would just sort of sit up and take it. And they basically decided that this could be applied to humans as well. And that in the face of just insurmountable obstacles or difficulties, um, and, and that could be a very wide, wide range of things, that people would have this learned helplessness, um, that they just, I can't fight it, I can't fight what what I am, my situation, there's no point, I just have to sit up and take it. And this is problematic for human beings in several ways, because we are not um, dogs, we are not um, an animal that is sort of destined to a specific fate, we, we have the ability to change our environment. And so um, it's not exactly a one-to-one -one comparison and it doesn't cross over perfectly. But people have taken this concept, this idea of learned helplessness, and have applied it to people and have said, well, when a person is from a disadvantaged economic background or they fit a specific amount of criteria, then they can have this learned helplessness where they just think that the world is out to get them. They can't do anything to get out of their situation. And it's it's a pretty disheartening idea, you know? Like it's not a positive theory. It's not a it's not necessarily a good thing. Learned helplessness is not um appropriate. And um they've seen this in in child studies where they're looking at children and how they develop and sort of how their brains are wired and um infants and babies have this learned helplessness then and then they're the, the kind of the thing the baby is counting on is that its parent or that its care provider will come to the rescue and fix the solution hence why the baby cries and you know it's alerting everybody to its helpless situation and the the red pill community or the the conserv the alt conservative uh, opinion of this is that too many liberals are engaging in this learned helplessness and um i think there is a place for criticism i don't think you can just level it at liberals or you know gen gen z or gen z or whatever um there isn't like a specific group that you can really do this to but i feel like all of us in our lives at some point have sort of dealt with this learned helplessness thing i've certainly dealt with my own share of problems that I thought just existed, that I just had to sit up and take, you know, there was no changing my situation. Um, as somebody who went through school with like some pretty heavy learning disabilities, I kind of just thought that I would always be, uh, you know, a bit of an imbecile, a bit slow. Um, I take about two or three times longer to process and read information on a book. Um, despite the fact that once I have that information, I have an incredibly good recall and a really good memory. Um, it takes me a long time to process this information and to get it into my head and then to, you know, extrapolate it. But once I have it, I'm able to convey it and I have this ability to, you know, do it really well. But I didn't know that. 
And so I just thought that, oh, I'm just going to be slow for the rest of my life. I'm going to be, you know, inefficient. School has always, always, even from my last university course, school was always so much work. I always felt like I was trying four or five times harder than everyone else just to get, you know, a B or a C or something. And if I had really embraced this idea of learned helplessness, and I think at some point I had embraced it, especially sort of at 14 years old, I just thought there's no help in me. You know, I'm not university bound. Um, it's just the way the world is and I have to deal with it. I have to somehow just, you know, adapt to my helpless nature. Um, and thankfully I didn't, I didn't end up doing that in, in a main capacity. I worked through it. I worked crazy hard. Uh, I'm incredibly proud that I graduated and I, you know, convocated and everything. Um, but this idea of learned helplessness can find you in any area of life, whether it be relationships. I hear some of my friends talking about how they're just destined to be alone and they can't help the situation, even though we have so much agency. And that is really what dispels this whole idea of learned helplessness is that we as humans have agency. We have the ability to change our situation. We can move. We can change who we are. We can change what we're doing. We can change who we interact with. And so whatever problem you might have, whether it be something involving your career or your job, your academic abilities and your sort of headspace, your mental health, spiritual health, um, whatever area of life that you might find yourself feeling helpless, it's not as bleak as it may seem. And the idea of this learned helplessness is that you have kind of, you have been shown at every corner, oh, it's helpless. Like, ah, oh, I'm helpless. Like, I cannot be fixed. It can't be helped. The situation, it is what it is. And while, while that, that phrase, it is what it is, from a Taoist perspective, that's great. You know, you can't fight the universe. You just got to roll with the punches. You're missing the second part of that. It is what it is, is not an excuse to be complacent and just to fall into helplessness. It is what it is, is a method of understanding that the world is going to do what it's going to do, but you also have agency. You also have this ability to change up what's going on and how you interact with it. And I think that's where this kind of political version of learned helplessness has been used. And like I said, typically conservatives look at younger liberal people, younger woke people, whatever you want to call them, and say, oh, look, they have used one of their labels to define themselves and now they just refuse to, you know, have any personal agency, personal responsibility. And I can see that. I can definitely see people in the liberal space who... Um, will ascribe a label to themselves, whether it's accurate or not, and say, oh, well, I have this label, so I can't do anything. I no, I'm, I, I have this label, so, you know, society is built against me and all of this stuff. And the one thing that you have to say about Western democracy, Western society, for all its faults, for all its difficulties, for all of its systemic problems and prejudices, is that no matter who you are, whatever label you have, there are people out there that represent you that are crushing it, that are doing incredibly well. Um, and so I, I sympathize with the liberal point of view that, you know, there are systemic problems, there are issues in our society that are very difficult to overcome. Um, when I was born, if I wanted to marry a man in 1996, that was not okay. That was not possible in Canada. And so I get the systemic problem uh, issue. I understand it. However, our society is growing. Our society is changing. You have agency within your society. And so the idea that you are helpless or that you cannot fight your circumstances is also garbage. Um, and so I think the, the problem that this term learned helplessness gets in society is that it raises a good point and it raises this issue of 
well, when the system's built and it's built to be rigged against you, how can you do anything? I get that. But the system is also built as a meritocracy. The system is also built to give you agency. The system is also built that if you're able to meet the right people, be the right person, work hard, put in the effort, um, try things unexpected, do things in a different way, um, you can succeed just as great as anyone else. And I think this is actually one of the biggest divides between left and right politically. And you guys know me, I'm not left, I'm not right, I'm somewhere in the middle just trying to exist in this highly political space. Um, but yeah, this, this term, learned helplessness, is kind of a big reason why people don't get along. And um, maybe it's that liberal people think that the government should do more to even the playing field. And the conservative element thinks that, you know, you should just, it should be on the person and their own agency. Again, there's a place for both. There, it's not, it's not a black and white. It's not 100% one way and 0% the other. It's going to be a 50-50, maybe a 25-75, some way or the other. And I just wanted to take this time to talk about learned helplessness and to really implore you that if you feel as though you are helpless in any situation in your life, there is so much agency and ability within yourself to change the situation, to alter it into a better way. You are not a dog trapped in an electrified cage. And I think that's the, the best the best way I can say it, because this, this term and this idea and this psychological uh, concept was created because of, you know, watching these animals, you know, not be able to get out of their situation, total, totally lack of agency. And that hopefully doesn't happen a lot of, a lot of the time in our world. So the, the term can be applied to infants and to situations where, yeah, you really don't have an alternative. You really don't have another choice. Except in our society and our world, uh, you have an infinite amount of choices. You have an infinite potentiality. You have this incredible space of which you can grow and develop and change. And if you really don't like the system, there are other systems all across the world in all different spaces. You know, if you're not succeeding in an academic career um, on campus of a university, you can do it online. There are so many avenues to success in alternative routes. Um, you don't have to just work on Wall Street. There is investing in a million different ways. Uh, making friends can happen in a million of different ways. And so that's really what it comes down to is every single person is incredibly unique and your circumstances are very, very specified to who you are which can be really scary and it can be really frightening to realize like, oh man, this is all on me. But you also have a million billion different options and opportunities and different ways of which you can encounter problems and solve them. So you are not helpless. And as scary as that is, as, as terrifying as it is to realize that you're not helpless and that it's on you to, you know, make a change if you want to make a change or to keep going the course that you you're going at, um, it is, it is a fact. And while there are people who will go out and hold your hand and, you know, there are safety nets, you should probably learn to act as if those safety nets weren't there. You should probably learn to face the adversity pragmatically and try and respond to situations as they happen. You know, I think we, we spend a lot of time with this anxiety of, oh man, what if this thing happens? It might happen. And you should just hope that when the time comes and that thing that you're dreading happens, you'll be able to handle it with the skill and the ability that you've learned through your entire life. Um, and at the end of the day, if a safety net catches you, awesome. But don't think that it'll come back. Don't think that the safety net will be there the next time. And you know, live your life on those terms. This idea of helplessness is not, it's not a beneficial thing in our society. And that is one thing that I can concretely say in this video rather than just saying, well, it's a little bit of this, a little bit of that. 
helplessness is never the situation you want to be in. It is a situation you will inevitably find yourself in. Um, we all do. We all get old. We all become uh, reliant on other things and other people. And none of us live in a vacuum. But self-reliance, that's awesome. Switching it up, doing things differently, finding a different way to succeed. We love that. Every single day, the news is full of people who did things slightly differently and it worked out really, really well, well for them. So that's my two cents on learned helplessness. Again, I don't care much for the whole political debate, whether, you know, it's right or wrong, whether this generation is just so lazy and they're avocado toast and blah, 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 blah. Cool. If that's your perspective, awesome. Um, not all of us think that way. Not all of us engage in that kind of um, activity. Um, but I'm not going to judge you if you do. So let's just try to talk about this constructively. Um, I'm sure there will be people who are sharing their wisdom down below about facing adversity, you know, avoiding helplessness. And as long as we can talk about this with compassion and understanding on both sides, I think it will be a really good conversation because the goal is not to tell the other side how dumb they are and how, um, inept and inexperienced they are. The goal is to try and lift everybody up, to realize that nobody has to be helpless and that we can all succeed. It is not a zero sum game. And that is one of the greatest things about this planet and this existence that we get to all share together. Yeah, so I'm gonna leave it there. Thank you so much. Leave your comments down below. Be compassionate, you guys always are. Uh, I'm always humbled by how amazing you guys are and constructive and the conversations are always so thought-provoking and meaningful. Thank you so much. And as always, I will talk to you guys tomorrow. <laughs>